And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. One of the most popular games that there is is Agricola, a big game about farming and feeding people. A very popular game. I enjoy it. It's one of my favorite games. I'm always glad to play it. And so when they came out with Agricola, all creatures big and small, we thought, oh, great, new expansion. No, this is actually a two-player game. And if you note the size of the box, it's very similar to the Cosmos two-player series games. It's two-player only, and it takes kind of a subset of Agricola, uh, that about getting animals and putting animals in your in your barnyard. Is it a good game? Is it like Agricola? Can it cure cancer? Let's answer some of those questions. There's a player board that's placed in the middle of the table, and each player also has their own little farmyard down here that they'll start. They also start with nine fences, and over the course of the game, they'll be able to add to their farm, and you can add to either side as long as you don't, as long as you match the road with the road. You can't turn it upside down like that. But at the beginning of each round, the focus comes on this main little board here. And you'll notice that many of these spots show arrows. And what that means is you're going to place that much of that resource in that arrow at the beginning of each turn. So you see this one says one stone. This one says two stones. This one says add a pig, add a horse, add a cow, add a reed. And here we add a fence. Now, one thing that's interesting, these spaces, if there's already something there, like if there's already a reed here, then I add a sheep instead. If there's already a pig there, I add a sheep instead. If there's already a horse here, I add a sheep. If there's already a cow, here I add a pig. So there can, if no one takes anything from these spots, they can grow and expand. Starting with the start player, each player has three workers and they're going to place those workers in different spots on the board one at a time and then they'll get the whatever the spot has. Now the spots on the top simply give you all the resources. You get all that wood or you get all that stone. This one also gives you the first player marker. That's the only way it will switch. These give you all the resources you get here, animals. This gives you one wood, one stone, and one reed. It doesn't add up like the other ones do if no one takes it but it always gives you one of each. This gives you the fence and an expansion. This one you can sell wood to build fences. Uh, this one you get two free fences, but you can also for, you can build extra fences for two stone. Here you can build a special building. Here you can build uh, one of the feeding troughs pieces and you can, for free and then you can pay, build extra ones for three wood each. Here you can pay five wood or five uh, stone to build a stall, and here you can build the special buildings. I'm sorry, here you build the stalls, here you build the special buildings, two spots, and here you can change a stall into stables. Now, your whole goal of this game is to have enough spots to put your animals in. Now, one of the simplest ways to do that is to simply use your fences to build different corrals. Now, you'll notice that my cottage here at the bottom has a fence all around it. In fact, all the buildings do. So if I had a building here, I wouldn't need to build a fence there. Once I have a fenced in area, each area here can hold up to two animals of the same type. So if I put horses here, then horses stay there. Horses don't mix with cows, you know. And I could put two in each spot, so this area can hold four horses. If I build a feeding trough here, then I've doubled that, and I could put uh, eight horses in this whole field. If I put another feeding trough in this section over here, then I would be able to put 16. But after that, we get kind of ridiculous. You can always put one animal also inside your cottage. That's what that little number inside the red means. And other buildings might have one. For example, this shelter can hold an animal. But there's other buildings that will do better than that. The stalls can hold three animals, as you can see. And when you increase them to a stable, they can hold five animals. And you can double that amount by putting a feeding trough inside the building. Here I can increase my my cottage, and here I can build a storage building which can't hold any animals but gives me points at the end of the game. So all this you're doing is to find spots to put your animals. You need to get animals and put them in the different farm areas or in your buildings around. After eight turns, and we know that the, the game is timed because each turn one of these fences comes out. There's only eight fences here. So when the eighth one comes out, that's the final turn. After the final turn, everyone first gets one point for every animal you have. That's easy. Then they get bonus points, which are on the side of the box, which I thought was a pretty good place to put everything. 
For example, if you have zero to three sheep, you will lose three points for your bonus. But if you have 14 sheep, you'll get four points. And if you have two horses, you lose three points. But if you have 10 horses, you get four points. And so you can see that there's, the more animals you have, you get bigger bonuses. Also, several of the buildings will give points. For example, if I built this half timbered house, here you'll see that it gives five points. While the storage building here gives half a point for every building material you have at the end of the game. And then finally, if you have one of these extra sections on your farm and you have something in every spot, whether that means the spot is fenced in or that there's a feeding trough there or a building, if you have something in every spot, then you will get a bonus of four points. You use a little score sheet to keep track of all the points, which you keep track of all your points for each game. And whoever has the most points is the winner. This is very interesting because this game has a lot of parts of it that really feel like Agricola. Putting the workers down, building the fences and things. But this one, I think, is going to appeal to a lot of people that might not have liked Agricola. One thing about Agricola, which you may like or dislike, depending on who you are, is that you have to feed your people all the time. Feed, feed, feed. Get enough food or starvation happens. You don't have to worry about that here. And I think people who hated that part of Agricola, and there are people like that, will enjoy this. Some people also enjoyed parts of Agricola where they were just fencing in animals. Some people got a real big kick out of that as opposed to planting and carrots and doing all the other things. This is all about the animals and I think that's going to appeal to a lot of people, especially with the pieces that come with this game. Other than that though, it's very light, very back and forth. Not a lot of, you know, in your face, just I'm putting my worker in a spot where you can't take something and what am I going to do? What are my strategies? This game does not come with the enormous wealth of options that Agricola does, mostly because the card games, the cards in Agricola just are different in every single game. But this game does offer decent choices to make a very fast and fun two-player game. I like it a lot. Uh, if this was in the Cosmos two-player series, it would be one of my favorites because it's just entertaining and it's fast and it's fun and you build and, and, you, and, you, and you go for, you try to get as many animals as you can of one kind for the bonus points, but you don't want to have no animals of the other kind so that you lose points. Which special buildings will you build this time? You know, how are you going to go about building? It, it's very interesting. There's never a point where I was like, ah, oh, there's nowhere good to go. Sometimes your opponent will go to a spot you really want it to go to, but there's always good backup choices. This is kind of an easy going two player version of Agricola. And I think that's going to appeal to a lot of people. I mean, if you want the toughness of oh, the farming and the huge amount of options, those aren't here. But if you just want a fun two player game that can take 30 minutes to 45 minutes to play between two people and easy going, but also offers a lot of choices, then this is a game you're going to enjoy a lot. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at Funagain.com.